And then I was also thinking about Miami Art Basel that just happened because it felt like it just came and absolutely went. I've not seen much footage around it. I've not seen many people posting about it, maybe because it's on social media and Instagram and I haven't really been on there for a while. But I don't know. I just feel as if like the coverage on it in terms of a cultural sense has waned. And I wonder if it's a consequence of the economy we're in at the moment and the fact that we're, you know, currently in a global recession to some extent, or is it just the fact that people are kind of bored of what's on display at the moment, especially with the prevalence of AI art and flipping NFTs and all this sort of nonsense that maybe we finally reached a kind of glass ceiling when it comes to these big sort of corporate, you know, artist exhibition events free trade show type of things for me when i was growing up this is always one of the you know places to go to on the list of the what was it on the list of the influencer world tour type of vibe right to borrow a term from hair impressions t-shirt this was kind of that kind of thing where these are one of the things that you'd go to alongside with a paris fashion week alongside with maybe coachella um, maybe some other trade show like agenda when that used to be on r.i.p maybe complex con now but there'll be certain things on in the kind of influencer calendar that you had to go to to be seen and to make sure that you're touching faces shaking hands and meeting the right people to allow you to have the ability to get boxes of shoes or invites sent to you you know on a consistent basis and now for some reason i'm not too sure what's happened like i said but i feel as if like miami art basel um so art basel miami has definitely lost a little bit of his panache it's just kind of gone. I feel like the people who are there, who are well-known, have essentially been paid to go there. I don't feel like a lot of those people are there, you know, through their own volition. They're definitely there because somebody paid them. I feel like the patrons are there to be seen, but then no one cares that they're there. And the brands that are there are also there just because it's a kind of cultural obligation. Like how I used to do when I used to be a social media manager, you'd go and there'd be a list of these dates during the year or you know maybe it's international burger day pancake day whatever it may be and you'd have those dotted into your content calendar so that you would share them on days you don't have anything to share in terms of internal news in terms of products or service features or updates you'd use those little um you know dates are already in the calendar those kind of you know novelty days like pancake day and burger day to kind of boost your message and to kind of you know have it piggyback off of the algorithm that's kind of going on at the moment or the virality of the trend but i feel like with this our puzzle it's like nobody even knows when it's on nobody cares that you're there so if you, if you are going there to be seen by the people who are there to be seen no one actually cares so it's a really strange place to be in overall but i don't know i'm just wondering why what happened because i feel like a lot of the time a lot of people that went there legitimately went there because they just went to go they weren't they didn't even need to get paid whereas now legit the pictures i've seen of people who are somewhat famous look like they're bored out of their skulls they could be anywhere else in the world but there but here they are so i don't know i'm not really too sure what the deal is i'm just looking at some pictures here scanning on the screen checking out some of the quote-unquote art you know it's nothing that you would legitimately leave your house with to check for in any way shape or form i'm sure some of the more interesting high caliber people maybe just let leave the places alone and just kind of stay in stick to their galleries and whatnot maybe there's a whole different kind of you know feeling behind that also when it comes to that sort of stuff some of the bigger selling artists are the ones that maybe attract the most viewers will probably have made a stand against it for whatever reason i'm not really too sure about the ins and outs of the art industry in that sense but just from an outsider's point of view, it definitely has lost a little bit of a spark. And I don't really know why. I say I, say I don't, but then I'm looking at the art and it does look a bit shitty. But again, it's all subjective. So you can't really say that even though you can. But yeah, maybe there's something in the quality of the art that's maybe letting the event down. Or maybe people are just generally over it. Who bloody knows? But I've not seen anything on my cultural um, wire or you know ticker tape that's basically told me that something has happened. It just felt like a natural, slowly but sure malaise, as you can see from this cassette tape um, print out or sculpture or not sure that says, are you out of your mind um, with a picture of a sandy beach and some ocean, or maybe it's a sky and some ground, however you look at it, but clearly something has been lost and something's gone missing with uh, Basel, Miami Beach 2022. But again, not seen that much of it so far. But the one thing I did see that did get a lot of attention was this great idea. And I'm pretty sure this was from Mischief where they had this ATM machine where you could, I guess, input your card and it would get capture your balance and then it would put you in the leaderboard and then people could see who has the most money. 
and I think at the time Diplo was number one and then some other dude who came through and he takes a picture of you that he has your picture up on there as well um, on the machine and this dude came through who looked like you know your typical kind of Eastern European um, fly boy or rich guy with a suit on and his trophy wife just standing there and he had I think like nine million in his checking account or something stupid I was like god damn imagine just having nine million sitting in your current account just like you know eating a hole in your in your flipping pocket sometimes when I have 50 pounds or 100 pounds sitting in my account that I haven't transferred over to savings or whatever I, I feel like I'm a you know I mean I feel like I'm big I'm a big I'm a big dog when I head to shots because I don't I don't even check my Monzo I already know what's in there I know there's 87 65 in there so you just hop in there and you feel like an absolute big dog imagine having nine mil just sitting there burning a hole in your pocket but this is a video of Diplo um, entering in his DLs and putting himself up on the leaderboard Leslie balance inquiry your checkings checking your savings should be your checkings so so it looks like he had three mil sitting on his check-in the guy before Diplo that put a picture up there had two mil the guy before had one mil on his check-in another guy had 500,000 crazy a lot of dudes though that's another thing too a lot, a lot of dudes you don't see a lot of women on this list i'm not sure what that says about the economy i'm not sure what that says about capitalism i'm not sure what that says about the matriarchy the patriarchy sorry matriarchy or the patriarchy i'm not sure what that says but regardless this is maybe the funnest thing and the most impactful thing that i've seen come from the back of art basel but for the most part everyone else has kind of not really paid that much attention to it in any kind of similar shape or form to be fair oh yeah and this bin bag thing also right who's this from let's see here um chairs are also a prevalent talking point here courtesy of hype pieces chairs are a prevalent talking point throughout bars and the surrounding events located on the second floor just past the entrance of miami convention center people began to stop and gaze at the floating chair that colombian artist maria jose arona played which we saw already like horizontally suspended nearly six feet in the air arona played incredibly poised as she terrified subtly moving her fingers and limbs for during the event oh so that was actually her bloody hell so it was actual woman that was suspended in the air on a chair that was lying flat which is actually absolute floss installation originally went on view at the ballroom martha in 2011 another one staying on chairs harry nuriv brought a slice of new york through a work dubbed the trash bag sofa at bells on miami just across the street i was interested in separating the visual qualities of an object from the object itself transforming it into something that transcends how it's perceived said a designer in a statement although the surface looked like a trash bag found in the street nerve actually constructed it with leather so it's a leather looking trash bag essentially you can picture it on your head if you're not watching this and it basically sits like a normal sofa which kind of reminds me of what demna was doing at Balenciaga with those trash bags so i'm not too sure if this game before the trash bag but he probably is inspired by demna because of his look uh, if i'm not mistaken he's got those square toed um, balenciaga boots on as well so maybe that was a play and extension of what demnus does but you know great artists copy and steal and whatever that term is so that makes a lot of sense but yeah apart from that i've not really seen much more that's really of interest there's a picture here that's your screen that looks like a picture of marilyn manson or marilyn monroe so marilyn manson marilyn monroe sucking on somebody's big toe which maybe explains why no, it's not Marilyn Monroe. That's Madonna, actually, in it from the book Sex. Yeah, I'm not talking about it. But there's a picture of Madonna from ages ago sucking on somebody's big toe, which might explain why Miami Art Basel isn't what it once was. But regardless, interesting nonetheless. Interesting nonetheless.